Hello, everyone. We're here at the Metals Investor Forum, Toronto edition. We're with Galen McNamara, a CEO of Summa Silver. Galen, thanks for being here. Great. Thanks for having me. Good to be back, Peter. Always a pleasure. Yeah, of course. All right. So, Galen, tell us about Summa. Um, you started your presentation a little earlier uh, talking about uh, Mogollon, which is in New Mexico. And you said it could be one of the largest great vein fields um, in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, can you explain to yeah. us what that what you mean by that? Uh, you know what that's that's a good that, that's a good quote there from me because that's not something that you know I say lightly or should be said lightly. But you know, let me try to put it into perspective. So right now we're drilling a, a strike length or a length along the vein of, of 500 meters, so mm -hmm. half a kilometer. Well, in total, there's five there's 50 kilometers of strike length of vein and perspective structure on this project and. You know, okay, well, well, how do you know that you know all of it's mineralized, right? How can you say that's all, all of it's mineralized? And one of the questions that we had when we first started working on this project was, okay, well, we better go out and, and prove that up a little bit and take right. some samples at surface and you know before we even think about drilling any of the other veins or any of the other targets. And so what we did was we flew a, a lidar survey, and that's you know a fancy word to say it's a laser that hangs from a helicopter. Uh, and it shoots at the ground and you can pick up, you know, every little pit, every little trench mm -hmm. uh, that you fly over. So we found something like 350 historic prospect wow. pits and trenches that, you know, the old timers had dug going back to you know, the 1880s or something like that. And we didn't have any data for them. So you know, we went up and, and the guys, the, the geos crawled over the hills, all those hills like ants and sampled everything <laughs> right. uh, and got some pretty interesting results from many, many areas, anywhere from you know, several hundred grams per ton silver equivalent to several thousand grams per ton silver equivalent. I think the top, you know, the, the highest grade was 4,000 grams per ton, you know, but at that point it's just numbers, right? You know, big <laughs> right. numbers, but just numbers. Sure. So, but anyways, long story short, why do we care? Why does that matter? Well, over an area of two kilometers by about two kilometers, it's still very clear that there's a lot of joy left here, even at surface, and there hasn't been any modern exploration, really, uh, on all, in, in most of these areas. Now, some of it will have been mined, um, but we think we have a pretty good handle on where that is, uh, so we can go in and, and really test some good targets uh, in the fall. Okay. So now you mentioned that if you add up all these veins, you're up to as much as 50 kilometers. Would that be within this two by two kilometer area? That would be uh, the entire project. Okay. Yeah. The entire, within the two by two kilometer area, it's probably half of that or something okay. like that. Yeah. All right. So yeah. just for perspective, that gives us some idea. So, exactly. so ultimately, uh, you know, if we think way ahead, if this were uh, developed and so on, uh, the beauty of it is that you're working in a relatively close area with potentially a lot of uh, a lot of uh, silver down there. Yeah, absolutely, and right. you know, uh, like I, I use a little bit of a cliche in that. You know, our right. team of geos is like you know they're a bunch of silver sniffing hound dogs just <laughs> waiting to be let off the chain. So exactly. So we got a lot of hungry people that want to make discoveries. I, I have no doubt. Excellent. Um, in your presentation earlier today, you talked about uh, other districts that this might compare to. Can you elaborate for viewers here what yeah. those are, which districts those are, and and to what extent they, they compare? Yeah, so you know, when, when we were first looking at these projects, when I first thought to myself, you know, do I want to do this a few years mm -hmm. ago? You know, you, you got to kind of think big, right? And it and it's a little bit of a go big or go home attitude in that, well, if we're going to do this, what are, what are some of the things that these compare to, some of the really big things that these compare to? And, you know, the two projects that we work on, uh, I think can bear could compare very favorably to some of the famous Mexican districts that mm. the Spanish have been mining going back 500 years. And yeah, the indigenous people before that, for sure. So, you know, take the, you know, the, the Guanajuatos of the world, the Pachucas of the world, the Sandy Masses of the world. You know, I think that with enough work and, you know, it's still early days, mm -hmm. but you know, that's the, the level of potential I see for hundreds of millions of ounces or else, you know, I just wouldn't be wasting anybody's time or money. Right. Right. And that seems to be kind of the magic number these days. If you can, if you can ultimately turn up in the neighborhood of about a hundred million ounces, then it starts to become interesting from an economics perspective, but yeah. also from uh, uh, perhaps a, a larger player's perspective. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you, know, you kind of think that, Hey, uh, if you want to go down that road of, you know, what would a larger player want to see before, you know, maybe coming in and, you know, you start to think of, you know, 100 million ounces is probably the minimum, but our philosophy and our approach is that, you know, we're always looking for, we're always preparing for the next step. Like imagine you're driving on the freeway, you know, you're, you're always driving and you're getting ready for that next turn, 
right? But if and when an off-ramp presents itself, you know, you might think about taking it then, but you're always ready for the next step and you're always kind of planning to do the next step yourself. That, that sounds like a wise way to, uh, to manage things. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully expectations. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've talked about uh, Mugillon in, uh, in uh, New Mexico. Uh, not f all that far away is the Hughes Project in Tonopah, Nevada. Can you tell us a little bit about location uh, the advantages of location yeah. there and, and kind of what's going on at, uh, at Hughes. Yeah. So Hughes is, is one that we're, excuse me, probably a little better known for Great. in that you know, we've done a lot more work there. Uh, we've drilled a lot of high grade holes, uh, and every hole we drill there, I like to say is like, you know, we're adding ounces systematically. So we're going to go back there this spring, uh, and drill some really compelling exploration targets that, you know, are, are within sight of, you know, one of the best American silver districts around and, and right along strike from them. And, you know, these targets have never been tested and were never really recognized before. So we're going to take a little bit of a big swing there. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that's the saying is that, you know, there's a time and a place for taking big swings and, and no guts, no glory. Right. So if we talk a little bit more about Hughes, can you give us an idea of the scale so far? And can you give us an idea of the the kinds of grades that you've been coming across? Yeah. So the first thing is the is the scale. So we've hit on four target areas over a trend of three and a half kilometers. Mm -hmm. All four target areas we've hit grades exceeding a uh, thousand grams per ton silver equivalent. So we're we're trying to wrap our arms around you know how many ounces could be left there, and that's really the. You know, that's really the, the big picture takeaway is mm -hmm. that, you know, figuring out what's left, it's obviously something significant. Right. Um, and then in terms of grades, I mean, holes that are in the neighborhood of 2.8, 2.9 meters of 3,900 grams per ton silver mm -hmm. equivalent, um, all the way to 18 meters of uh, 590 grams per ton silver equivalent in that neighborhood. So, you, you know, the, the goods are there for sure. Right. Um, and now it's just, hey, you know, drill it out, find more, keep going and be aggressive. So certainly uh, what looks like economic rock mm -hmm. um, without much, much doubt, obviously, you know, the quantities have to also be there. Um, but um, these are, uh, these are the kinds of things that uh, bigger players will look at as well these days, because you need to be at multiple hundreds of, of amount of grams per ton these days sure. to, at, with the way costs are going up to process or to make sure that this is going to be valuable. And even if you sort of have, I'm assuming, you know, a sort of a, a stagnating kind of price uh, horizon, then you could still be making money yeah. with these kinds of grades. And that's important. That's actually a really good point. You know, you want to find something that, you know, makes money in all price environments. Right. Um, that's easier said than done. But when you're in the, you know, high, high hundreds of grams per ton, to thousands of grams per ton, you, you have a really good chance to do that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we've got a minute or two um, that we can uh, maybe sure. round things out. Sure. Maybe, um, can you give us uh, some idea of what the catalysts are going to be this year? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. You know, we're very well financed with $12.5 million in the bank. Uh, we're just wrapping up our drill program in New Mexico now, which means a lot of assays pending. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other good information is coming down the, on, down the pipeline on that as well. Um, and that is going to be mixed against uh, a lot of work in Tonopah starting this uh, spring. And we're going to be drilling some very um, compelling targets that, you know, we've been waiting to drill for a couple of years now. Uh, and then in the fall, we're going to roll back and, and bounce back to New Mexico and continue to follow up on some of the really good successes we've had there so far and test some new targets there. Too. Wow. So it sounds like it's going to be... Another exciting year at SUMA. Yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Peter. Yeah. Um, what would be um, kind of a takeaway you'd want to leave the viewers with? You know what? Uh, you know, pe people kind of say, "Hey, you know, why do I why do I own your stock or why do I own your stock?" And and it just comes down to, "Hey, where are you going to make money?" And right. you know, and and I combine that against you know great great drill results so far, many coming. Uh, and if and if you're a fan of silver and you think that good times are ahead of us for silver, I mean, and you want to make potentially life-changing games in a, in, in a medal, you know, for me, now is the time when I have uh, really took, am, am trying to take big swings personally. Right, right. Well, so far the results uh, certainly look like they're paying off and we uh, look forward to uh, continuing to follow uh, SUMA. Great, well, thanks again, Peter. Thanks for having me and great to be here. It's been my pleasure, thank you. Okay.